Hi guys, Irina here and welcome back to my channel where I review everything tech. In this video, I'm gonna compare the cameras of these three phones, the iPhone 13 Pro Max, the Google Pixel 6 Pro and the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. Right off the bat, I'll say that all of these phones have incredible cameras, but in this video we'll dive deeper and see how these phones compare side by side when it comes to camera performance. As usual, I'll break down this video into categories so that it would be more coherent and easier for you, and let's begin. Let's quickly go over the camera specs of these phones. First of all, all of these phones have a main camera, an ultra-wide camera, and a telephoto camera. The only thing is that the S22 Ultra sports a dual telephoto camera, which gives this phone an advantage when it comes to zoomed photos, and we'll see how translates to the real-world photos and videos, but now let's start with the portrait mode. The first thing I've noticed, and it actually made me really happy, is that the portrait mode on the Pixel 6 Pro got better. Previously, this phone provided over-sharpened photos in the portrait mode. You probably remember those skeleton hands from my last camera comparison. And now, despite being the sharpest between these three photos, I think this photo looks good. Another thing I was really happy about is that, unlike its predecessor, the S21 Ultra, the S22 Ultra does not provide portraits with excessively soft skin. Now the skin looks pretty natural with some texture and I like it. Speaking of the portrait mode on the 13 Pro Max, I think nothing has really changed here, but at the same time I see nothing to complain about. And when it comes to separating the subject from the background, for some reason the Pixel 6 Pro struggled with the sand, which I think is supposed to be an easy task for any phone, and unfortunately this was not an isolated incident. And let's take a look at the next photos taken in the portrait mode. My jacket looks so different in these shots. I think the iPhone 13 Pro Max is the closest to showing the real color of my jacket here. Speaking of skin tones, I think all of these phones did a good job. They look slightly different, but they're still in the range of my normal skin tone. When it comes to separating the subject from the background, the Pixel 6 Pro blurred my lips and chin here, and also some parts of the boardwalk were not correctly processed. And while I think it's okay to have some occasional flaws in portraits, I have to admit the Pixel 6 Pro has these flaws way more often than the S22 Ultra and the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And to make this comparison a bit tougher for these phones, let's take a look at these backlit portraits. I think this is one of the worst lighting scenarios for any camera, but these days smartphones can handle it. And I think the S22 Ultra did the best job here. The photo from the Pixel 6 Pro looks good from afar, but if I zoom in, you will see it's not sharp at all. Also, it looks kind of pixelated, and I think you can see the situation with separating the subject from the background. It looks rough, but I have to admit the background looks beautiful, and the Pixel 6 Pro did a good job properly exposing the subject as well as the background. And when it comes to the iPhone, I think this was supposed to be a beautiful vibrant shot, but something went wrong and my face looks faded. Well, maybe it's not that bad. What do you think, guys? Yeah, portrait mode can still be tricky, even for expensive flagships, it's nothing compared to taking random daylight photos. And speaking of daylight photos, let's take a look at some samples and you can judge them for yourself.
Now let's talk about zoomed photos. A quick reminder for you guys, the Pixel 6 Pro has a 4 times optical zoom, the S22 Ultra has a 3 times and 10 times optical zoom, and the iPhone 13 Pro Max has a 3 times optical zoom, which means these phones can produce their best shots at these numbers when you're zooming in. And first, let's take a look at these 3 times zoom photos. Unsurprisingly, the S22 Ultra and and the 13 Pro Max produce sharper looking photos than the Pixel 6 Pro since they both use the optical zoom here, while the Pixel uses the digital zoom cropping the photo taken with its main camera. But let's take a look at 4 times zoom photos and this is where the Pixel 6 Pro shines, providing a more detailed shot, since it's using its optical zoom here. But at the same time, if you don't zoom into the photos, most likely you would not even notice any difference in quality of these shots because they're all pretty good thanks to the telephoto cameras on these phones. Let's take a look at these 10 times zoom photos and here you can see the advantage of having a 10 times optical zoom on the S22 Ultra. Look how much more detail we can see in the photo from the S22 Ultra. When it comes to maximum zoom, it's 20 times for the Pixel 6 Pro, 15 times for the iPhone 13 Pro Max and 100 times for the S22 Ultra and a few more samples for you guys. Next, let's take a look at some ultra-wide photos. The S22 Ultra and the iPhone 13 Pro Max have a slightly wider field of view of 120 degrees versus 114 degrees on the Pixel 6 Pro, which means you could fit more into the frame with the Galaxy and the iPhone. However, when it comes to the photos themselves, as you can see, all of these phones provide really sharp and beautiful shots. Yes, there are some differences in color temperatures and exposures, but eventually it comes down to your preferences, guys. Now let's switch to the front cameras and it's important to note that the Pixel has the widest field of view so it could be really helpful if you're trying to take a group selfie. And let's take a look at some photos. So yeah, the front camera on the Pixel 6 Pro has the widest field of view and here you could see how much more you could fit into the frame. The selfies from these phones always look slightly different in terms of overall colors and skin tones, but I would say all of these phones provide really nice selfies and it's hard for me to pick a winner here. And now let's test the mics. So this has been the sound from the Google Pixel 6 Pro. And now I'm switching to the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. So this is the sound from the S22 Ultra. And finally, I'm switching to the iPhone 13 Pro Max. So this is the sound from the 13 Pro Max. What do you think, guys? When it comes to video stabilization on the front cameras, as you can see, it's just amazing on all of these phones and it's actually hard to pick a winner.
When it comes to taking selfie videos in low light, I was a bit disappointed that this thing with excessive noise hasn't been fixed yet and it was not even that dark. If it was darker, it would look so much worse. The S22 Ultra also has some noise in the background, which frankly I'm not a fan of. And as you can see, the iPhone 13 Pro Max does the best job here. Let's talk about videos and start with the stabilization test. These videos were shot handheld and I intentionally was walking pretty fast, but as you can see, the stabilization is just outstanding on all of these phones. And switching to the ultra wide cameras, as you can see here, we have pretty much the same situation in terms of stabilization. It's just great on all of these phones. The only thing I've noticed is this red noise in the video from the Pixel 6 Pro. Not sure what happened here, maybe some kind of a glitch. You won't actually notice anything like that in the other ultra wide videos that I'm gonna show you next, but I'm not trying to hide anything from you guys, so it is what it is. A few more daylight videos for you guys and you can judge them for yourself. Now let's talk about night photos. Of course, all of these phones have the night mode and with either of these phones, you will get pretty good night shots. I've noticed that the iPhone has a little different approach to taking night shots. I would say it provides more realistic photos, which do look like it's dark outside. The 13 Pro Max is not trying to make things much brighter than it is in real life, while the Pixel and the Galaxy make things much brighter and crisper, including the night sky. And it's not a good or a bad thing, it just comes to your preferences, guys. Zooming in into these photos, I would say in most situations they're pretty much equal in terms of sharpness. Each of these phones sometimes provides a sharper looking photo than the others, but I would say there is no pattern here. and a few night videos for you guys.
so these are all the photos and videos I had to show you guys. First of all, I want to take a moment and appreciate how good the phones have become these days. When it comes to the camera performance, sometimes it still blows my mind. I think by this point, you probably already know which phone is the winner for you. But if you ask me, while I truly believe all of these phones are very capable and provide incredible photos and videos, I have to admit that the Google Pixel 6 Pro is less reliable at the moment. And you could see that when it comes to portraits, selfie videos in low light, ultra wide videos in low light, and just some occasional mishaps. Don't get me wrong, this phone is very capable and I've taken tons of incredible shots with this phone, but still, this is something you should keep in mind. That's all for this video, guys. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon.